Welcome everybody. This is BNB Weekly, episode no, I need to cheat, uh, 98. Uh, just updated this one, but I can't remember that. So a two, two episodes short from two, 100. It is 28th of September 2020. Um, and in the BNP Weekly, we talk about what's happening within the Microsoft 365 level, concentrating on Microsoft Teams, SharePoint OneDrive, Microsoft lists, just so many other things. Stream, uh, Yammer, PowerPoint, Office yeah, Word. Exactly. So <laughs> many, so many things. <laughs> my name is Esa Yuvonen. I, I work as my, in Microsoft as program manager. With me as a co-host is Waldek. Waldek, quick intros. Hi, everybody. My name is Valdek Mastikas. I am head of product at Rancor. And today we have a guest from, I don't know, sunny or not sunny Finland. Vesan Novo. Uh, yes, sunny. Sun. It's trying to shine yes. outside. Yes. yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vesku Nopanen. I'm a principal consultant working for Sulava, uh, concentrating on modern work. And of course, hopefully some of you know me already because I'm an MVP for Office Apps and Services, basically focusing on Microsoft Teams. So hopefully we are talking about lots of teams today. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's my passion. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> now that's actually interesting, but why is that your passion? What, what's what's the magical thing about teams? Uh, let's put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you are putting me on spotlight. Uh, you yes. activated it already. Uh, okay. Uh, my passion for perhaps uh, one thing is that I've been working uh, more or less from home for past twenty years. Not all the time, but uh, all the time increasing amount. So I've been accustomed to work from anywhere. And uh, when Microsoft Teams came out, it basically exploded that scene uh, to be able to do that truly, at least in a very uh, way better than before. Yes, okay. we had Skype for business, we had OneDrive, we had SharePoint, we had um, uh, OneDrive it. Sync, yeah, <laughs> everything like that. But uh, in a sense, uh, Teams uh, brought this together, and and you had a uh, better chance than before to do that. So basically, it's uh, allowing for us and everybody to do. Uh, better work anywhere, and and you can have that work life thing going on. So yeah. so that's why it's my passion because it's open it opens up a lot of possibilities. And as we have seen this year, <laughs> uh, then, yeah. Then, yeah, so we know it it kind of a uh, but then other people also realized its possibilities and potential in this working yeah. from home. Yeah, yeah. And I, so uh, that's I, in I, short. I like how you put put it also in the, in the way that it's actually leveling up the people uh, regardless where they actually work. Um, so because that's certainly one way of thinking this, especially now that everybody's working from home, everybody's working from home, and then the Microsoft Teams is enabling us to work efficiently across the world regardless where you are. Uh, obviously, my my big push on having a one universal time zone uh, would help tremendously, um, but. That hasn't really worked out that well yet. So. Uh, yeah, we just have to make sure that it focuses on uh, Finland time and everything <laughs> yeah. is related. Well, but I mean, like we have UTC, right? So if, if, as long as we communicate UTC, then yeah. that's enough. I mean, that is yeah. one time code, if you like. It's not zone, but it's code. Yeah, <laughs> universal time code. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Now, um, but, it's, uh, now, yeah. that, now that you said that, uh, that actually the time zones have become more and more relevant this year, uh, when we have a uh, lots of online events, that was something I, I used to rant already. It's because uh, if you don't put the time zone there, people are really confused. So yeah. please just put the time zone in there. But I think <laughs> like like the one thing that intrigues me, right? Like the, over the past months, we've seen the big switch from working in the office to working whatever you want and like at this stage it's mostly at home but it's no longer a choice right so we need to we need to basically adapt to this reality that that we currently have and try to find a balanced way to work what 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 intrigues me though is that i think that we are still like one step behind the ideal case where we switch more towards working uh, um asynchronously as opposed to like we need to have a meeting now. Like, what? Is, why cannot we do the same? Let's say in long form, you will write proposal or make a PowerPoint deck. Have everybody look at it and give back when they have the time for that. As opposed to now, no matter where you are, you need to drop everything, carve out ten minutes, half an hour, hour to jump on a call together, whether it's seven p.m. your time and you're about to put kids to bed, or it's ten a.m. in the morning and there is sun and you would rather go to the park. No. Right now, let's have a call and meet. Like, I think that there is still like a lot for us to win in there. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you guys see at the same, the same uh, then at the same time, you cannot 
decline that having a one to one discussion even with video, with video is better than having a disconnect that uh, comments Absolutely. and ranting in comments on what do you mean with this and then just that can take a tremendous amount of time as well. Yeah. So it, it's it's yeah. Yes, I th I All think the that sides. there's there is two sides to it. I think that like um, historically we we rarely had the need to be like really or have the craft our skills or or to hone our skills to express ourselves clearly in written form because like we would meet people would go to the room like you would have eight people an hour long meeting and you would like but but what do you mean what do you mean with that and you then you can read people see people and so forth and so on and we kind of like grew into this call it inefficient way you know and then basically mm -hmm. how things evolve right sure i fully agree that there is like for some things there like this like we cannot do this asynchronously. Yeah? Like you cannot re record your video <laughs> and we record ours and Vesa does his video and then we try to get them out. So like for some things, like there is no replacement for the, let's say human contact, even if it's just via a camera. Yeah. But I think for work cases, I think there is still a lot for us to win Absolutely. regarding more to work more asynchronously and then working more across the the, the world as opposed to like, like we work remotely, but we are kind of in the same place anyway, still. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think that's uh, absolutely true because for for past three years, I've been trying to push people to work asynchronously more uh, because of course uh, we can't do this in that way. But what we could do is that we have this uh, recording, we see each other then to, after work uh, or the post-processing, we could do asynchronously. And that we are usually at work working more with documents or with ideas and stuff that doesn't require that. And and when you are having in when you have enough material, you could then spend that half an hour or one hour together to proceed it even more. That's the kind of the idea. You do the pre-meeting and post-meeting stuff asynchronously. And when you have the meeting, you have can concentrate better on the basically, okay, what are the actions or, or kind of a decisions there? And and that, so uh, that is what teams is opening up even better than before in the near future. Yeah, yeah. I think the technology itself is technology is evolving so fast that we can much more efficiently get access on the documents as well. And and using the Microsoft Graph and everything, you know exactly your latest mm -hmm. documents. I was just just when I open up the clapboard uh, in PowerPoint, it is a PowerPoint by the way. Um, you can actually see all of the PowerPoints which I had opened up in Friday in my desktop computer. So it is actually quite cool how the system is, is now truly connected and you can actually yeah. access everything. So really cool. Um, and you can use any device to contribute and any device to modify. And that's actually pretty mind blowing as well. So and I guess yeah. there is also like over the past few months, we've seen already even improvements going um, further. It was exactly that, like because you worked on this, like th these are your last files you worked on but who's to say that I still need to work on them? Or why should I see these five as opposed to these other three, right? And I think in the, over the last few, I think even months already, like we've seen, for example, in Outlook on the web, there is these things like pre-reading, recommended pre-reading for yeah. a, a meeting, which is like brilliant, like because all these insights are already in the uh, server, like or or in M365, right? Substrate is the word, right? So they're, they're already there. M35 knows everything already about whom you work with, who is in your team, with whom you are about to meet, with when, about what, because of that, these insights are there. And then the only thing left is like help you prepare more efficiently upfront to, to, to basically cut the noise of a meeting to minimum, cut, cut the, uh, the overhead, and then just do the meeting, decide on a few things, and move on for, and let everybody work. Hopefully that's why the meeting exists, so you actually make some decisions. So rather than just, uh, <laughs> it is a you, means you to have, an end, not into... a purpose. It is yeah, yeah, a yeah, means yeah. to an end, not a purpose, right? You have looked into your calendar and showed that every meeting has a really good purpose and there are all, yeah. always about yes. decisions. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. All of them. Yeah. All of them, all of those recurrent once a week, 30 minutes and one minute, whatever, one hour meetings and ah, mm -hmm. okay, anyway. So I, every, we need to meet people as well. So, and, and having that human interaction is super important as well, but they're trying to find the balance rather than being eight hours in a meetings and then no time. To yeah, work. the day passed uh, and you haven't done, exactly. done anything, right? Exactly, exactly.
But now, Vesa, let's get back to you. Uh, so you, you work in Sulava uh, as a architect. Is that the title? Uh, as a principal consultant. consultant. Okay. Yeah, so what, what, what does that actually mean in practice? What, what does a principal consultant does in Northern Europe? Uh, at least for me, I, I guess there are different definitions, definitions in every company or even every person. Uh, but for me, it's uh, basically being able to visionize and help organizations to see how, what they could do with teams, how they should take steps forward, uh, how they, they can uh, take more value out of them. So guiding them on the high level and, and then hopefully jumping in to do some uh, sometimes cool demos, sometimes just cool presentations about, okay, how you can take this world uh, or these options you have into, into everyday use better in the company. So that's basically more or less my lead trying to be in advance ahead and, and uh, convey those thoughts there so they can yeah, gain an edge there. So kind of a trusted advisor of the company helping them to be more successful with their investments. Uh, so what, what do you see? What's the, the, the number one or let's say top three, top five, after putting you on spot again, <laughs> the problem is on, on yeah. the top of your head. So, yes. of your yeah. Head, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The team, it's always funny when people say, okay, what was the best uh, announcement from Igniting Teams? Yeah. Uh, I, I can't pick one because the, it, it advancing in so many levels. Uh, there are so many area, areas. Uh, one big thing is, of course, how to utilize Teams as a platform, because then you are connecting Teams to your business. You're connecting that to the processes and taking advantage that uh, it is a huge thing. Uh, and I, I'd say any advancement there, it's it's a big, big one. And of course, meetings. Uh, we are now doing meetings more than before and, and every uh, those kind of improvements that are coming there and being available to use them, also combining them with the Teams as a platform as well. Yeah, I'm connecting some dots here. It's kind of a uh, that's very important place, and and that's a thing that's going to drive us forward. Making these meetings, what we have, hopefully only only the meaningful ones, uh, are going to be even better and easier, and and we won't have that much meeting fatigue. For example, those eight hours of meeting, yeah, you, nobody wants to do that, uh, of course. And 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 the rest is about collaboration, and as you said, uh, the graph uh, and AP uh, and AI uh, bringing information to the people how you can utilize it better, so you don't have to feel like okay, I'm being overflown with information, but I don't know how to uh, kind of uh, get get the overall picture there. So everything that is helping there, it's going to also also to help more uh, work more efficiently, for example. And I'm sure I forgot a few things there. There's huge a uh, number of announcements and and what what's significant and what's not and and but the um, thing is that I think those top are top three for me uh, at the moment. What about yeah, if we think about teams? Yeah. So so <laughs> what about if we if we think about obviously it's it's all about teams. Not what else would it be? <laughs> now, um, uh, if we think about the, the day to day work you've been doing in the past as well, and then coming back on the teams as a platform, we we've seen obviously as as an internal person, I know the adaption curves and everything else. But what do you, what is your take on uh, how can we make customers to adapt the platform more efficiently? What's missing? Is it a capabilities? Is it education? Is it something else? What are we, we should be doing as a Microsoft? Uh, what an open question. <laughs> <laughs> where do I start, uh, right? <laughs> yes, uh, where do I start and let's... Uh, and and obviously, it's, it's not a right or wrong question. It's more yeah. about what you've seen on the, on the, uh, on the field. Uh, I think it's about uh, balancing uh, return of investment and, and the possibilities. Because when you have all the new capabilities from the platform, uh, it's very hard for organizations to see how they are going to impact the business. And, and uh, closing that gap, they're having those, uh, it's, is it just demos, examples, or a kind of a, a, a case story is something like that, uh, when you can start realizing, okay, this is how it would impact our business. Because everything uh, Microsoft provides usually is generic. Uh, it's, and it doesn't necessarily hit that same uh, kind of companies uh, a need source or something like that. It doesn't uh, resonate yeah. that well, right. unless you are in a very in a, in the same specific 
kind of a situation as the example of hope. So, so that's one of the difficulties to find out and figure out how you can go there with smaller steps and, and seeing the value out of that, seeing the benefits for both organization and of course for the people. So it's about adoption a lot. And so, benefits. So, and so, so far that to what extent do you see that as um, the Microsoft jobs uh, uh, job to do that? or the partners who know the companies, the market, the verticals, who basically walk there every day and you know the customers, you know problems in the head, right? So to what extent do you expect or would you expect Microsoft to, to uh, give you these stories, use cases, the benefits versus you being a partner doing that by yourself based on the, let's say, broader uh, data? Uh, of course, Microsoft cannot scale. There, so that's why there are our partners, and and we are the ones telling our, our letting customers know how they can benefit from this. Uh, but uh, when we are then looking on the case studies, or or you have some kind of a uh, okay, here, here are some experiences what other companies have. That usually, at least in the beginning, comes from Microsoft until there are more and more examples uh, how how organizations have been. So, but usually, yeah, it's a partner's job and, and that's what we do. We kind of uh, take all the Ignite announcements and then uh, reformulate them that. in a way that I uh, distill that and, and uh, okay, this is what it actually means. And, yeah. and this is what you can do with that. And then, because otherwise it would be, a, uh, it wouldn't be a trusted advisor if you're just uh, floating with them with everything people are saying at the Ignite announcements. Yeah. 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 yeah, and that's the opportunity then for partners to also make money. Obviously, that's the consulting business, and then the, the value add in a way, right? The value add in the in the partner ecosystem, because obviously it's 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 like you said, Microsoft doesn't scale, and it's not in our interest to scale because partner ecosystem is super important for the for Microsoft. So having that worldwide reach locally with the partners who know how the local business actually works, super, super important. Absolutely. Absolutely. There, there was another thing that I wanted to ask, going back to what you said about your, your job, like over the past six months, like we've seen this pandemic hit us and companies had to change and adopt, right? What are the, again, top three, you can name five <laughs> or one, things that you would say companies uh, struggle with the most? Like what are the the most difficult parts for them to embrace this new way of work? Uh, if looking purely from teams wide wise, uh, it's of course they they uh, adopted first the meetings because that was important. How do we substitute live meetings with virtual ones and and helping out there? Of course, you, before that happens, uh, in some companies you had more or less. Issues you had to think about, okay, how's our security, how's our infrastructure, uh, how people can get connected to teams uh, or into meetings, uh, especially if you couldn't connect through, the, for example, the, just uh, through going to the public inter internet. Right. So that, uh, so, so that kind of issues, there were several ones, of, of course, that were prominent. If, if everything was routed through the company network, for example, that was created a bottleneck. And, and that happened. Because uh, people weren't expecting that, so uh, the, it was a uh, collection of the infrastructure and, and of course, the uh, uh, how people are accustomed to work, what they are expecting. Uh, because uh, lots of people were first time working from home and they were in a situation that they didn't have to address before, so yeah. they weren't ready. How do you work on these documents if you were still working like solo, like you did uh, before? Uh, you have your own documents somewhere, you've only published them when we're ready. So everything I've been talking ag uh, against what I've been talking in <laughs> teams yeah. for a long time now. So, so it's kind of uh, bringing the teamwork there. So yeah. of course it was challenging, but I, I take the human factor in as well, uh, because um, uh, because people were ready, they, were, they weren't thinking about that that much. Yeah. So, so uh, suddenly they had to work from home then they didn't have to show social contacts or, or network like that. And a work environment from home wasn't necessarily the ideal one. Yeah. So, so of course the well-being, and as you mentioned, you have maybe had lots of meetings back to back, a uh, little time or break, hey, and, and kind of mixing up that work-life balance totally in some cases. So it, uh, it was as much as a as, uh, human side as a tech side there. How do we proceed? How we do? do at the adoption really quick. And I think during the Ignite, it was a, I don't remember who said it, 
uh, but uh, it was great saying like uh, a year, one year worth of digital transformation happening every month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it kind of drove things forward very well. Yeah, the, the numbers you. were insane yeah. in spring. Yeah. They were just out of yeah. this world, uh, yeah. forced by this pandemic situation. But yeah. and, and to be honest, I think one of the, the, the well, obviously, the, the situation is bad, but luckily, so to say, this happened in 2020 rather than 2010, when most of the companies would not have an Azure AD or cloud identity or cloud transitioning, and they would never have this infrastructure to actually start working remotely. Um, in 2020, we had readiness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 2015 would have been bad as well. Yeah, yes. But, but because uh, lots of companies have uh, uh, change to the cloud in past five years. Yeah. So the yeah. 10 years saying, yeah, it would have been bad for most. I did work from home 10 years ago or 20 years ago, but that, that was something that was possible when you are kind of a thinking ahead, when you are driving, when, when you are kind of a, one of those enthusiastic people who can make things happen and, and you have a motivation to do it. But when you hit the masses, that's uh, something you would have to have certain kind of a, uh, 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 let's say, uh, not schema, but something like, okay, this is how we do things. You have a playbook and, and instructions yeah. and guides. Yeah. And, and those, missing those, yeah, it would have been yeah. really bad for economy. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and sure, this situation was bad already, and we are still in the middle of the situation. <clears> but <throat> I, I think at least the technology and the infrastructure does exist for us to do this, which is which is yeah. great. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, should we do some uh, articles for a while and talk about the articles and ignite announcements? Totally. And then we'll come back on the on the discussion. So let me do it. Screen. Let me jump to here uh, and let me share screen number two. Two minute screens. Yes. Screen uh, number two is live. Screen number two is live. Let's start with the Microsoft Teams. Uh, obviously, it is Ignite Week recap. Uh, so there's mm -hmm. a lot of lot of Ignite announcements last week. Uh, for those who haven't set up today, there's, there's actually a good set of articles uh, in in multiple different block areas. Um, it's kind of the pity that all of this is Microsoft Teams blog, SharePoint blog, Shirts blog. So it's really hard to actually find all of them. <laughs> but hey, at least it's, it's out there. So oh, meetings. It is a lot, right? So if you yeah. do it in single place, and I mean. There is one place that does all of these announcements, right? Um, that's the Book of News. <laughs> no, <that's... laughs> uh, Book of so, News did not have every announcement in there. But... Well, the broad lines, you know, the yes, big, yeah. big announcements, exactly. Yeah. 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 Anyway, just quickly scanning through on the on the latest announcements from Microsoft Teams that to get a mode, uh, it's actually really good that we're getting additional uh, views in here, so that's pretty cool, um, as expected. Uh, yeah, and then custom layout, so you can actually overlay screen sharing. That's actually pretty cool as well. In a normal meeting, not just in the live events and, and using OBS, you can just do this in Microsoft Teams. And that's actually pretty cool. Uh, breakout rooms, uh, I think more efficient for learning and EDU. Uh, probably that's where it's mostly used. But every now and then we've been having meetings where you need to have breakout rooms in Microsoft as well. Meeting recap, so summaries on what was actually happening. This comes down on the, again on the intelligence um, and collecting the information to one location, which is really good. And transcripting, by the way, super, super, super powerful as well, now that it's actually there. Because after the meeting has done, you can then download the transcript and do a search, and then you can find what's relevant rather than and the whole video. And it comes with uh, speaker attribution. So you can see who, who's speaking there and not just a yeah. plain transcription. Yeah, and, and it's going to be a lot of fun with us Finnish people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Finnish language isn't that easy for computers to understand. <laughs> or, or even our accent. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, webinar registration reporting, super important as well. Yeah. So yes. really, really cool stuff. Uh, uh, meeting room experiences, uh, this is really cool. Uh, so. 
a lot of improvements there as well. Obviously, not to identify for anybody to buy these at home, but to yes, of course. Like my my together. my office is busy. I have appointments. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, new calling experiences, uh, collaborative calling, so multiple people, chat and collaboration, new stuff there as well. Teams templates. I think we talked about Teams templates for quite a long time already, uh, but there's there's updates in this one as well. And the info pane pin posts actually really really important thing and the new conversation button in channel so that uh, rather than reply yes. on, on a wrong <laughs> new conversation a yes <laughs> very good <laughs> yeah and the, by the way the pinning is, is is one of the really good examples of an important ways because at least we have for example the MV, with mvp teams channels and and the first post in the teams channel a year ago was welcome and explaining what this is all about and now it's like 500 messages after yep. that so how could you find that welcome message with pinning you could just put it scroll in there and keep, keep scrolling. keep scrolling just yeah. keep scrolling <laughs> new search and uh, research search. experiences yeah you search yes <laughs> well i mean if you even don't know that it is there how would you find it right that's true yeah. that is true as well that is true okay, uh, search is better yeah, yeah. It's going to be and right the there. new search is, is, yeah, so proper Microsoft search. The old team search had some challenges. Um, that's probably the right way of saying that. Just... <laughs> uh, better integrations, uh, so well-being and insights, the user inside. This is really cool yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both, both of them are really uh, cool. Sorry yeah. to cut you, cut no, you no, in, no, no, but no. that well-being well part, um, uh, when those announcements came out, uh, that was bigger than I thought, personally, yeah. uh, because uh, yeah, it's a very important topic, and uh, that came. Uh, I, I realized after that, yeah, it's uh, this well-being stuff. It, uh, when I've been working from home so a long time, I don't pay too much attention for that because it's uh, I, I, my flow is what I what it is already. But for people in that situation, yeah, they uh, lots of people we are going to get help through that. And, and yeah. so it's really important to bring in that human aspect to it. Yep. Um, another thing that I love about this announcement is the fact that it seems like if you look at across the market, I haven't heard about any other company to think about it that way. Not just like, like yeah. this is a cool app that allows you to meet, allows you to see to see so many folks on a screen, and you can just yeah. But this there's also this human aspect to it that it seems like nobody else didn't ever take the time to pay attention to. Whereas this is now like like really obvious now like all of this is important tech tech features are are important it's important that you that we, that we can see each other find files but there's also the fact that if we all are collectively unwell none of the these features matter because we yep. we won't be able to do any any our work right so gotcha. first things first and I really love this thinking about like this tech in this way in in way like putting people first. Yeah, Absolutely. and putting that to teams where people work. Exactly. Exactly. It, 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 it used to be in, uh, yeah, of course, it used to be in Outlook, but uh, who works yeah. right there? Yes. Yeah. Some people still use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do get an insights email every single Monday yeah. to the Outlook. So, hey, so, yeah. but again, me too. But again. Yeah. Um, and then the, the the next one was really cool as well. So we have a special, well, there's an ad additional blog post uh, coming on that one as well, but SharePoint home sites in Teams. Um, in the past, you've been already able to embed any SharePoint page on a Teams, but now with the proper navigation, deep linking, uh, all of that stuff, you can actually operate on the, on the site and it's truly integrated in the Teams. So it's not about choosing between a classic communication or corporate intranet and the Teams, rather let's combine and surface the application and communications in here. So, which is really cool. Uh, first line workers, walkie talkie, Android, uh, healthcare, Teams, ER, HR connector, interesting. So, Epic. a lot of stuff. Which, Epic. A lot of stuff, which, yeah, which, yeah. App yeah. Yeah. Uh, security and compliance was a big thing uh, in the background as well. Not always the super sexy thing, but making sure that everything is, is working properly. And then a lot of lot of announcements also on the platform extensibility. Um, this is a big, big, big investment area uh, for the meetings extensibility. Really cool. So yeah. for the meetings, during the meeting, and after the meeting, have extensibility options uh, available. So really cool. Yeah, it, it's going to change meetings. I, I yes. really like that. Of course, for ordinary users, they are going to load that the way that Polly is going to be one of the first apps there. 
So, so you can create polls in Teams meetings. Yeah. Well, I mean, with V, you can just raise hands. Yeah. There, yeah together your, mode. Together your mode. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's why together mode is also awesome. Yeah. But, um, that's true. That is true. Uh, and then additional things, a lot, a lot of announcements on the on the platform side, enhanced also integrations in the Power Platform side, Power BI, Power Automate, uh, and then the, the the Power Apps is now directly included in Microsoft Teams as well. So again, like Vesa was saying, you don't have to move away from Teams. You are in the Teams, but the relevant data and applications are surfaced for you uh, in that UX. So it's kind of a shell where you are including videos, communication, chats, collaboration, and then even surface the relevant application inside of it. So. And then you have the uh, backend systems as well. Uh, yes. apps. So that, that's a big thing, like you, everything you need for your information work is going to be there. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Um, one really cool thing, resource constraint uh, specific consent so for developers and IT admins, so you can actually have yeah. consents related on individual themes um, or channels, and that's actually a really, really cool thing yeah. as well. So, um, and that's going to change a lot about de development capabilities, even though if you're not a developer, yeah, I don't care because it's it's hard to understand what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the interesting thing for for this will be the governance, right? At yeah. scale, will you be able to keep an overview over 20, 100 channels and teams you have? Who has access on where, yeah. Exactly, and which apps are installed to what and which apps have access to what. Yeah. You know, the that, matrix that of that will get, get really big. I mean, at the end of the day, it will be like a really big Excel sheet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or Microsoft lists. <laughs> well, that would be a really big list. So this columns. is just a, a additional article related on uh, creating customers meeting experiences with apps in Microsoft Teams. So really focusing on the before, during, after meeting, and what are the, the experiences and how you can ex actually implement them. That's a deep dive on this one, but really cool options and capabilities which you can take advantage. And that's by the way also showing the options of overlaying the and combining the the canvas. So whatever you're broadcasting by yourself, which is really, really cool. So, and there's already a lot of partners who are building stuff for the, for the meetings. Pretty cool. Yeah. On yeah. the, and, yeah. and what was a very great thing about that integration, uh, integrating uh, apps to meetings is that uh, basically the organizer can send questions to attendees. So, yep. so they, yeah. they get a pop up in the middle of the screen, as it was shown in your layouts in the middle, basically, and, and they, then they can, I have to answer that, for example. Yeah. Yes. And and so you can get uh, people more active and not just asking questions in a chat where they are. Kind of, especially if you have a chat like with uh, uh, that uh, MVP experiences channel meeting, uh, th then every question you throw in there is basically lost. Yeah. So, you know what? So, like, I th I think this would be really cool when Fluid will become available. Because then, real time, when you are meeting, you will be able to co-create a thing, whether that's a chart, a view, an object, or whatever it is, and it's not a document. So you are not typing on two screens like you have a meeting here, file here. It's already embedded in your meeting, and you can work on this object yeah. that might end up eventually embedded inside a file. But you will be able to get that one specific part and work on it together live based on fluid inside a meeting context, which is like, I think that yeah. that as, as going to be really big. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it, and like, like, like discussed so many times that this is evolving the mid-class meeting culture, which is yeah. really, really cool. So bringing something new and bringing that, hey, I want to be engaged within this meeting because there's stuff happening, because we need to have that, that some sort of a interesting stuff happening to, to yeah. keep on being interested on, on the on the meetings as well. Now uh, on the OneDrive SharePoint side, there's a lot of a lot of announcements as well. We talked about already the the Microsoft Teams uh, integration, um, and really big point here is also the left navigation. So uh, it's not just about embedding portals, but also getting access on all of the news and sites and all of this stuff. So quick access and all of that, and and administrators administrators can control that experience. And this one's also. The same thing almost, um, but in outside of the teams as well. So you will have a global 
navigation, um, where at some point, not from a day one, you can actually then have additional extensibility and additional partner applications and all of that, which would be then it, also- It looks, like a, it looks like a Teams left rail. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, because if you're not in Teams, then the left <clears> rail <throat> does make sense that there's a left rail. But if you're in Teams, yeah. let's hide the left rail um, because you have Teams left rail. I mean, so. the left rail is just easy access to whatever contextual info Correct. you need to have. So whether it's Correct. apps or insights within the context where you are, right? So yeah. it just make, yeah. makes sense to have a consistent UX on the rail across all of the office apps as opposed to Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's different. So yeah, this one's really cool. A lot of lot of feedback during our MVP uh, presentation as well. Boosting visibility of important news articles. Uh, we in Microsoft actually use um, SharePoint News as the primary update channel. So we don't send emails for people. We actually do news articles, and then we surface them. Uh, uh, enhanced news feed, uh, automatically generated news digests, uh, so summaries on those, because some people want to have emails, so that's fine. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, no, it's just easier way to catch up on that. I mean, I, can, I don't know if, if you can have, have summary. Yeah, yeah and, I'm, and I mean, given that it's internet, you probably don't have RSS feed, or you cannot authenticate really easily on that, on, on, unless you read your RSS in Outlook, which I think yeah. no one does. Yeah. So I mean, it just makes sense to have like a, a digest as opposed to having to go to the side head that there's something new in there, right? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Now, this one is also really cool. Uh, based on learnings, what we had with the Lookbook uh, site, we're now starting to introduce actual templates also in, inside of SharePoint. And these are new templates, new model. Uh, technically, they will be based on the site scripts and site designs, but they actually are super efficient. Super efficient. You can just apply them on top of existing communication sites as well, so like like with the lookbook. So learning from that remote provisioning model and then adapting that as part of the the product, which is super cool. Nice. Um, SharePoint Space is going to go GA pretty soon, uh, so that's cool as well. So the the well, it is actually one way. Uh, cool way of, of actually sharing information and building content uh, in the internet. Maybe it hasn't been that big of a success when they first announced that. What's, have you tested it? Just out of curiosity. I haven't. Um, I intended to. <laughs> teams. Uh, I had over. a plan. No, I, 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 I had plans and I still have plans because I, I see it opens up very great possibilities for especially learning and showcase portals yep. Yep. And, and it's very visual and so utilizing that is still on the way but uh, I still I would love to use that with the headset yeah so that that's one of the primary things why I haven't been trying to start playing around with that yeah and I'm still waiting for the teams integration of course so once it, more, uh, you can uh, actually take your SharePoint Spaces page and add this. Uh, you can embed that, that in SharePoint, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Teams, well, absolutely. So I guess the interesting thing will be, again, if this is embedded in context of a meeting, how will that improve the meeting, especially when you have, when you work with 3D objects, like, and everybody can interactively look at them from different sides, how will that, like, will, will the use case for that be clearer than just putting th something on a page and everybody can look at that in their own time. But I mean, if you work with 3D, well, you already do it elsewhere. Yeah. Right. So and, maybe, and maybe it could yeah. be fluid 3D, 3D. So fluid framework 3D, why not? Because you can mm. absolutely L in live kitchen, editing in 3D. Them. Yeah. Yeah. We, we did that mm. in the F Kitchen. So here we go. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting. And of course, uh, waiting to see that uh, together mode having that spaces version would be nice as well. <laughs> yes, that's true as well. Actually. Together mode in 3D. Yeah. So basically, yeah, like right. meeting uh, in person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> inside, inside. That that would be uh, that's something I envision. I don't know though, or hope for maybe a better word. A few years ago, that uh, during this 2021, there would be more virtual meetings. But there, that, there, there is just there, getting it. Yeah, there is just one but. Just we need something else because otherwise, like you will see a. Screen full of people, all of them wearing goggles. We won't see anything. Avatars. Yeah, 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 that's true. 
That's a good point. Uh, Yammer is getting a lot of love as well. So you can use the Yammer directly, or you can surface the Yammer, or you can surface the Yammer in Teams or in SharePoint. So that's really cool. A lot of lot of other improvements in the measures and, and uh, statistics as well. Now we need to speed up slightly. Uh, there was a good blog post uh, from Teshas. Teshas is a, a PM who's owning the home app site for Microsoft Teams. Uh, so basically just good Q&A quickly on those questions, which they got last week the common questions related on, okay, so what does it actually mean and what, how does it actually work and all of that? So what about navigation? Is it available? And answer is, as an example, yes, it will be available. Uh, announcing SharePoint Syntax uh, was, was also a big one from last week, uh, Tuesday. Uh, so SharePoint Syntax, Syntax is part of the project Cortex. So basically it's one part of the project Cortex, uh, which is then having the, the document detection uh, and automation and artificial intelligence on top of that. So uh, SharePoint, uh, this one is a really nice two minute video, if I remember correctly, uh, explaining what it is, uh, two minutes, 21 seconds. Yeah. And Jeff and then Naomi uh, are basically just explaining what it is and how does it actually work. So really cool stuff. Uh, what's new in the Microsoft Search, Ignite 2020 edition from Bill. So a lot of stuff here as well. Uh, so search, uh, people-centric search, uh, finally coming to the Microsoft Search as well. Find skills and expertise, so improvements uh, on the on the persona cards, which is really cool. Power BI search, getting those included in, in here as a vertical if needed. Conversational search, so teams data integrated in the search in here as well. Um, and it doesn't really matter, are you in the Teams or are you in the Microsoft Search, you will get the same results, obviously, because like it should be. Yeah. Image Search, super important as well. Finding that relevant data, improved filters and all of that stuff as well. Topic Search, so basically, what was this called in the past? Refiners, highlighted, yeah, the highlighted, highlighted results. results. Yeah, anyway. Has it that search? Uh, anyway. Uh, personal query history, that's really cool as well. So you can actually see your uh, old uh, queries um, and also a lot of, lot of additional investments here because obviously finding the relevant data is super, super important. But now that the graph and the connections are there, we can make this experience much, much, much better. So yeah. across the whole Microsoft 365. Now, this one is really cool uh, on the Microsoft Craft, uh, Craft site. So there's a, a additional, let's say, dimension of the Microsoft Craft now coming in. Uh, so Microsoft Craft connectors uh, to a different data, uh, connecting to any source, service now, media, box, or wherever you want. But then you can access the information through the Microsoft Craft. That's pretty cool. Uh, Azure Communication Services, uh, it's kind of funny that it's ACS, uh, because ACS has a different meaning in the past in the context yeah. of Azure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's confusing that we're using the same abbreviations uh, quite often for multiple different things, but it, it's basically additional connectivity. Um, and a lot of the stuff is actually, even though it's Microsoft Craft, which is part of Microsoft 365, it will be actually offered through the Azure portal. So you have a much more clearer cost structure uh, for the implementation as well, which is really cool. Uh, universal print, apparently that's still a thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I can print stuff on your printer. <laughs> um, really? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that is what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, is it just put... called actually uh, to save to PDF? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's printing. It's printing <laughs> the, the, on physical paper. Print uh, to PDF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there are many legal things where we still need to do some printing every now and then. Um, this blog post also lists all of the new tools and APIs, which is really cool, the Microsoft Teams, APIs, to do search, taxonomy, identity, and all of this stuff. So really cool stuff. And Craft Toolkit 2.0 uh, is out as well. So, uh, and PowerShell SDK came uh, GA for Microsoft Craft PowerShell SDK. So a lot of, lot of cool stuff uh, available in here. And then let's not actually deep dive in here, but a lot of lot of stuff happens also outside of just the the, the UX and the end user capabilities like search and compliance controls. And this stuff is, is super important for companies, not necessarily for end users, um, but a lot of lot of improvements here across the whole Microsoft 365 platform. So cool stuff like like labeling and and uh, actually, what is it? That's the AIP. AIP. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or it's MIP now. It's Microsoft Information Protection now. 
It might be, yes. You are absolutely correct on that. But really having that control on the on the files which are getting created inside of the of the company. Now, this is something which Smolder Cash written actually today, earlier today. You want to talk about this? Yeah, sure. So as the article says, it's my last week in my current job. I am moving on. Do we want to drive people <laughs> to the article? Or do you want to say there? Are you moving? <laughs> no, so actually uh, starting October 1, which is on Thursday this week, I will be joining Microsoft as a cloud developer advocate for M365. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. So what does that change on your open source and community work? Nothing. Actually, I <laughs> hope that it will actually increase that because Whereas in the past, like, and that uh, so what I explained in the article, like in the past, it, like I've been doing it. It feels to me like I've been doing a lot of this work already as side gig, as the, like a hobby. So I've been blogging now for I don't know twelve years or more. I've been MVP for four and a half years, and in all these uh, channels or engagements, like I've been building tools, sharing blog posts, going to conferences, uh, feeding back feedback to Microsoft about products and and tech. And all of that is dev relationships, yep. which is basically this well, job, right? So, should be doing, yeah. So, I, I, yeah. So, what I've been doing as side thing now that will become my job. So, meaning that I will be doing more of that. I will be be more present on GitHub in social. I will be reaching out to people, trying to learn what they struggle with, where we as Maxwell can improve what, what like is it docs is it products is it tooling right so basically doing more of this work and and that means in, especially now in current times going out on social and being where devs are being github stack overflow and social absolutely absolutely welcome by the way we thank you this quite, quite a long time quite a few yeah, times it's been a while huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah Cool. Uh, oh, uh, and let's go in here. So this one, uh, this is from you, um, and we also want to call out your uh, HTTPS. Uh, well, myteamsday.com is basically your blog. What, what you, what are the things what you're blocking in your blog? Uh, <laughs> Do you want to do an introduction of the blog? <laughs> uh, my I introduction. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, <laughs> it's mainly Microsoft Teams focused, but it is not just about. Uh, it's usually uh, working day related information. I used to have some posts about SharePoint as well, but uh, it's been mostly through uh, Teams user eyes or, or something like that. And I have some several posts about Power Platform as well, especially around Power Automate and Power Virtual Agents. Basically, there. everything so, so, into Microsoft in, in, in a sense, yeah. But um, so, so I have kind of two sides there. One of them is the end user side, and the other is more like power, power user citizen dev side. I'm not a dev, <laughs> so, so I'm not going to go into deep dive dev, but I have some graph API stuff there as well, yeah. because I, I use those with, uh, power, uh, with Power Automate or with the uh, PowerShell as well. So there's cool things you can do and extend the capabilities that are there. Yep, so, so absolutely. That's, uh, experimenting, trying things, proof of concept things, kind of stuff. And of yeah. course, you can see my live schedule there, so where I'm going to be speaking next. Time, yeah. So and that's that's the the next discussion point related on the Teams Fest. Uh, can you do a quick intro and promote what is Teams Fest and uh, why yes. everybody should be joining this? Uh, Teams Fest is a 100% free community event uh, that is driven by community. So, so we have over 90 speakers from. Most of them are uh, from a community. We all know this, uh, most of the people. Some of them are newcomers as well. So, so there's a good quality of content there. And there are also several Microsoft speakers, like uh, some uh, someone from this uh, call. So Vesa Yuvona is there as well, speaking. And so, so we, we have uh, lots of great speakers there, lots of great knowledge. It's, it's kind of giving back to the community event. Uh, we, have, we have gained so much and, and learned so much from the other community but so we wanted to kind of bring the opportunity for people to learn about Microsoft Teams and see our passion in there as well. And, and kind of uh, also give other people some kind of a place where they can start, start their public speaking career if yep. they want. And yep. then on the other hand, have these old timers who have been doing this kind of shared day their uh, golden nuggets of knowledge as well. So it's it's kind of a I think it's a great combination and 
we started the, it being fully online before all this happened. We did our first Teams Fest on a year ago. It yep. was first called kind of October Fest, and but we uh, in last week we kind of changed it to Teams Fest. And, but when uh, you realize that the October Fest is already used by a in a different uh, yeah, term, yeah, we have used to. in a different. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of well, course. probably there's trademark <laughs> infringement yeah, and all yeah, of that. It's like, yeah, so, it's not like that. Yeah, so, so and it was really long to write, and um, <laughs> so we had to shorten it. So, but uh, that's a kind of it, it came from our passion to teams, of course, and, and yep. uh, through that. So there's huge number of uh, content. There's 85 sessions in there, so it's almost 12 hours. We have eight yep. tracks, wow. and and uh, that, that's biggest teams fest so far. There was so much good uh, uh, submits or sessions, so we kind of extended it. And originally we did it in Tentu, but uh, yeah, uh, there's there's great information and great speakers yep. there. So, so of I course, Karu, uh, Karu Ana is here as well from Microsoft yeah. and a lot of MVPs, a lot of people. Yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, so, so that's why we are very uh, excited about that. And, and it's really, really great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really cool. and so it's next week, Wednesday, 7th of October. And of course, you should join because it's a uh, uh, it's free event. Uh, joining doesn't cost you anything. You can watch uh, some sessions here and there, eight tracks, so you can pick the ones you are that interest you. And and of course, we will record them and and share the, the information later as well, so you won't be missing that. But uh, oh, what am I supposed to talk here? Which Microsoft Teams extensibility option is the one for you? Okay, got it. Um, yeah, <laughs> there is only one, to be honest. But <laughs> no, 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 no. There's so many options. <laughs> so. Yeah, depends if well, you are Dave or not. Uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. There's say multiple perspectives, and there's no right or wrong, which is a super important thing to realize. Now, right. now from a timing perspective, um, this is uh, anyway. This is happening next week, uh, so it's good yeah. to be aware of of this one. Well, depending on when you are watching the video or the podcast, but uh, yeah. Wednesday's of October. Yeah, and go out there and register. You will get an ICS file to to your calendar. Yep. Uh, we, don't, we are not collecting any, any other information. Your email is all that needed, so you can put it to your calendar. Uh, Perfect. We don't have any company sponsors here, so that's kind of very easy to join. We will have uh, direct join links to meet these rooms, so you don't have to sign in anywhere. Uh, it's just Teams meeting all the time. Yeah, yep. cool. So it's going to be interactive as well. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, this one is from Aura Rogers, uh, create power apps in Teams, new easy and database. Uh, so basically, how do you create, use the new power apps directly in the Teams and then start creating uh, content with so really nice uh, video uh, and, and clarification on how, how things, well, actually, yeah, eight minute video uh, and then the clarification on how to get started on things. So really cool stuff. Laura had also a nice summary on Microsoft Ignite and Microsoft list announcements. Um, we didn't have the list announcements in here, but I think they're in another blog post again or another blog environment, unfortunately, again. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of uh, good videos uh, around the Microsoft Teams, what it is and what, list. why is that a suitable, sorry, Microsoft lists and, and how do we integrate that with Teams and all of that. So Everything is Teams. So. Yeah, yes. everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> now, uh, this one uh, is from Joanna Klein, uh, custom help link external sharing in Microsoft 365. So basically talking through those options um, and how do you share and how do you how to get those things forward and what are the and showing in a video, uh, how does this actually work in practice? Yeah, it's, it's going to be even more important in the near future when the stream recordings of these teams Absolutely. Meetings. Going to the, directly to the SharePoint and yep. OneDrive. Yep. Which is actually an interesting uh, discussion point as well. Let's come back on that one after the four articles. Uh, but that really shows the, the new of OneDrive and SharePoint. And this one is from Waldeck. I was wrong about Microsoft Teams. And uh, you want to quickly uh, <laughs> explain? Yeah, so so like originally when, when Teams was released, I think four years ago, five years ago, like to me it was like, why do we need another IM app? And it's like, it took me quite quite some time to wrap around I had about, well, Teams is actually more of that. And I think the announcements from Ignite make that really clear. Like the things like putting uh, the headspace into that, allowing us to extend meetings, allowing you to, like, like we knew that, that we could introduce apps into Teams. But I think like 
you think more about like the whole experience around meeting like pre, during, post, and expanding that context, making it ad relevant, make it truly things where you can effectively meet as opposed to this to just being an, an app that you use to call each other or have I am it. So yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. like my yeah. original assumptions were 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 off. <laughs> yeah. And, now, and now it's always that you a are joining Microsoft, you just have to broad right. <laughs> no, I don't think that's I had this thing. sad the record straight. Yes. Or, yeah. or on the other hand, like I can say it, admit it now before I actually join, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is from, from Veronique from, Langell. Oh, it's okay from Vernick. Ten top ten things uh, to look out for when you're using Microsoft Teams. So kind of a learnings related on on the on the Microsoft Teams usage. Um, so and good. Top 10, top five uh, blog posts are always good uh, because then they're calling out tips and, and tricks on, on making things happen. So yeah, so Veronique from there. Now, and this one, uh, it's a few promotions from last week as well. This one was uh, just a great thing what Chef said in, in Chef's keynote. Chef on Framework is the easiest way for developers to build a powerful solution to reach hundreds of millions of users in the flow of their working both. SharePoint and Microsoft Teams. And really, a, a, we have a massive, massive updated focus uh, on enabling SharePoint framework in the in the Microsoft Teams side. It's already supported there, um, but there's more and more uh, investments on this area as well. And I think, Vesa, you had really good comment related on that one. What was it? Do you remember what you said when we talked about it? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, uh, of course, uh, well, uh, in the end of that discussion, we kind of said, okay, I'm not a dev. So that's not for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm the, doing the that with the power the, apps and, and uh, yeah, power The comment was that easiest way to integrate yeah. to Microsoft Teams. But obviously, if you're not a dev, then power apps and power automate and all of that stuff, absolutely easier. Uh, but then if you are a dev and, and the SharePoint framework has been insanely successful and it's the usage is growing just out of this world still, and we want a lot of those implementations to be transitioned to the Microsoft Teams and they work as such. So we actually want those applications to be surfaced also in Microsoft Teams. And then the last is that Robbie is also promoting uh, this week. Um, so if you're watching this directly on this week, when the, the, the BMP Weekly comes out, um, Robbie is having a Teams Day online session uh, building Microsoft Teams tab using SPFX. It was just nice to see that Jeff uh, again jumped in, showing that he is everywhere and he just follows up everything. <laughs> Which is really impressive and really great because yeah. I think yes. for ev everyone it me means really a lot. So it's yes. really ap appreciated. Absolutely, absolutely. So Jeff Deeper owns and controls everything under Microsoft Teams. SharePoint, OneDrive, Microsoft lists, uh, so all of that stuff, and he basically is the lead uh, in the in development and on the messaging. I, so, I, I don't still have that achievement. Steph, uh, Jeff commented, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> yes. I'm waiting for that. But I need a team stay online as well. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's on my to-do list. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Uh, let me actually stop that and then. Uh, there was something which I said, let's talk about that one in a second. Oh, that was the role of, of SharePoint and Microsoft Teams and OneDrive and everything else. So obviously, if you think about the, the announcements related on stream videos now being stored soon in a SharePoint and OneDrive, um, that, that gives an indication on the direction where we are heading. So Microsoft Teams being the primary UX, but then there's all of these additional goodies and applications which are surfaced inside of the Microsoft Teams as a first party experiences. And then in the same way as there are first party, first party experiences, then people can implement custom experiences as well. But for the for the stream uh, videos, I think it's a smart decision rather than uh, trying to implement security, sharing, all of that stuff in whatever they have right now, they cannot take advantage of the storage in OneDrive and then they get the the, the Microsoft IP, the, the information protection, they get all of the sharing and everything else as part of that thing. So. Which, which is also, I think, an interesting point, right? Like if you look at, for example, uh, stream, big videos, like you would, in the past, you would never say, like, SharePoint wouldn't be definitely in the top list of the places to put video in, right? Yeah. Because like that was how things worked in the past. But now that yeah. one, things have, have Im, Im, improved and two, like we are more conscious about all the things like legalese, like governance, compliance. Like, hey, that makes perfect. Like, why not get that everything for free, as opposed to you have to build your app and then some to have all these measurements in place. So yeah. with that, I wonder. Like, already today, 
graph exposes you easy access to SPO, to SharePoint yeah. lists and files. If you are an, an ISV and build an app, I think there is important decision for you to make. Like, sure, you build your own app, but will you leave data with your your customers, or will you want to try to control them in your like along with your own app? Given the fact that they will, because they for them they will they might use your app in M365, yep. so they will expect the same level of labeling, uh, governance, compliance, and so forth and so on, which you would need to offer them. Or will will you say, well, this is my app, I expose it here. And the data is stored along there, so yeah, the that you customer govern yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's certainly something which we've been trying to explain as a value add for a lot of the partners in the past as well. But I think more and more people are now realizing that that is truly valuable. It's it's truly available with Microsoft Graph APIs. You can easily access the data. You can update the data. You can get it in from make the contextual access on the on the documents what person has created and store those documents as well in and a then kind along of an with, location and yeah. then along with info about the person and their yeah. manager and their yeah. team and all of that yeah. is already just like one call right yes. because it's just a giant graph yeah absolutely absolutely so i think we'll get there one step at a time and uh, there's there's already a partners who are doing this and, and we can see an uptake uh, on the other partners of doing this in a more and more in the future as well. But I think there's a lot to be still done for educating on the opportunities yeah. and, and value add of rather than rather than storing something in a SQL Azure or whatever AWS, whatever the, the, the solution is, store it in M365. If they have the if it's targeted for that platform, you have access. Yeah. Yeah. You have all the power. So any last words for this week? Anything, uh, anything super interesting? What's happening this week or during the weekend? Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's like one, one, my, I don't think on my list, like getting new job. Oh, that one, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're waiting for the package to arrive, so that's that's, and um, you get your computer. Yeah, and, and then I'll part. get the new employee orientation days. So, and yeah. I, I, I think I don't worry about the batch because I, ca I cannot use it for anything. Like unless I will use it to open my own door at home, but yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, yeah, it's gonna be just a lot of logging in, meetings, intro, getting everything in place, HR, and then I hope that pretty soon I will be able to get going. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Vesa? Anything interesting? You said the, talked about the Teams Day online. You're yes, I, I, yeah, I will be talking in Teams Day online, doing my level up and become a the superhero session there, and then I will be talking on Saturday at 365 Saturday Warsaw as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Same title, but uh, I will aim to have some different content there, of course, because it's a different audience. And we are one and a half weeks away from Teams Fest, so it's about nine days away, so we have plenty of work there as well. Yep. Um, just talking about the community side, so, right. so it's going to be a a uh, very busy week uh, week for us, but it's yeah. going to be fun. I, I guess that's the biggest highlight. Personal life, after all that, we'll, we'll get back to it later. Now <laughs> 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 yeah. there has to be, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be it's, busy. Yeah. And it's it's all about finding the right balance. And in your case, I think you love what you do, so it doesn't. It's 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 finding the right balance. And then there are just a lot of work every now and then. And then it settles for a while. And then there's a lot of work. And that's I think that's how it's always. So I I'm, so yeah, anyway, it's sorry. It's fun to see, yeah. uh, to see that when when this epidemic hit in, I've been doing so much uh, presentations. I think if I sum everything before uh, this March up and, and I've been doing speaking in so many events around the world. And this yeah. kind of gives the possibility that you can be talking in the same time, uh, in the same day during at Switzerland event and then yeah. on the Chicago event. That's yeah. going to happen in November. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, but I so think that, that is a whole interesting aspect too, because I recall during build, like they said that in a past build was, I don't know, like 5,000 attendees event, maybe 10. Less build was 200k, 200,000 people. Like imagine the reach. It's the same people. Yeah. You you have the same amount of work to prep everything. Uh, when, when, when you you speak, no no Ignite. no no. There was build. There was build. Yeah. Oh the the spring build. Oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. right. Absolutely. And then you reach like 
such a bigger group and you don't exclude people who couldn't be there in place, had political reasons for which they couldn't join and so forth and so on, right? So is it the whole thing, like with regarding to reach, I think I like this change. Like even though I think that at some point we will get back to uh, in-person events. Um, it is more democratized. Yes, well, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. And and Waldeck. word has changed. I think. <laughs> what happened? Wait a minute. Waldeck. 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 <laughs> what, 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 what's happening? <laughs> Waldeck. <laughs> uh, and now there's going to be a chat message. I, I, I can see him typing. Yeah. Okay. But then... uh, that that okay. Let's wait for him to come back and and. <laughs> Because he had a good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but but meanwhile, I, I think the world changed permanently, and uh, that yeah. was a big hit for Waldeck. <laughs> yeah, clearly. clearly. <laughs> kind of frozen uh, for a moment. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, let's yeah. let's wait a few more minutes for him to arrive back, and we can cut potentially this part from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, oh yeah, but that uh, all right. Welcome back. No, uh, welcome back. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. So that was super weird because we could see you being confused and now he's frozen again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perhaps he needs a top ten teams uh, tips for tips. attending meeting. <laughs> 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 but that you should take a screenshot of that. That's a great, uh, great, great expression. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> let me let me steal that. <laughs> oh. yeah, but, uh, <laughs> or... Okay, now he's back. I saw him moving, and now he's frozen. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's. Uh, <laughs> Soon the time to end. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. So uh, let's close up for today. <laughs> so thank you, Vesa, for coming. Uh, so thank, and thank you, you for the great discussion. <laughs> well, I guess yeah. his, his screen is, is frozen and moving and frozen and moving. But yeah. thanks to everybody for watching and thank you, everybody, for listening. If you're using the podcast option, and we'll be back with the new PMP weekly <laughs> in a week. Now we can see him moving. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say something? <laughs> Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Thank everybody. you for having me here. Thank it you. was great. Thank you. Thank you, Vesa. Thank you, Vesa. <laughs> <laughs>